In terms of Hannibal, uh, you know, it's an intense story. It is kind of like a procedural, but not like any we've really seen. Yeah, it's, I think it has procedural aspects, but every time we see kind of this procedural aspect that we're used to, it gets turned on its head and thrown into the main arc of the storyline. And I think that's the work of the brilliant Brian Fuller, uh, who's done a great job show running this whole thing and, and creating it. So. I, yeah, I think that that's exciting about it, that it is a procedural, but it's really not. Right. It's more about the psychological relationship between the two. And it's interesting too because your character, especially once we see you in the second episode, I mean, and other characters, there's kind of a moral ambigu ambiguity going on here. Yeah, a huge moral ambiguity, I, I think, with all characters. And I think part of what Brian is exploring and what we're all exploring in this first season is the idea of identifying those parts those kind of psychological, maybe a little less moral parts of ourselves that exist in everyone else. So that uh, particularly when Hannibal meets Will Graham, he, he identifies a part of himself in Will Graham and how that's then teased out and explored. Right. And yes, certainly Fre Freddie doesn't have much of a moral compass. Well, in terms of Freddie, so you play this, she's like a blogger slash journalist who's yeah. kind of trying to dig a little deeper than maybe anyone wants her to go. Yes, she, she likes to think of herself as a crime, true crime journalist. Uh, and she is, yeah, she's really forward, I would say, in her exploration of getting to the story. Um, her concern, I think, whenever she meets a new character is, how are you going to help me and how can I make this better? Which is not terribly <laughs> the, the most likable of traits, but it's certainly fascinating. And it certainly, I think, speaks to the way that we as an audience and also the media can be hungry for getting those gruesome details at all cost. Right. And I mean, did you end up doing research in terms of like journalism and uh, those kind of uh, Yeah, I did, I did a bit of research when I first sat down with Brian Fuller after I, I found out I was signed on for it. Um, he showed me a picture of Rebecca Brooks who used to run News of the World and is a journalist that is currently arrested and, and <laughs> under suspicion of various wrongdoings. Uh, whether they're true or not, we will see as the trial goes on. But he showed me this picture of her because she was this kind of ambitious young woman too who ended up running this big um, paper when she was 31 and then continued on to do even bigger things. And that she was kind of the main source of my inspiration and certainly the starting point for him. Uh, once he told me this, I went home and there was a brilliant Vanity Fair article written just last year that I devoured instantly and, and kind of got that sense of uh, how to uh, approach these, these real people who yeah. <laughs> exist, this kind of uh, morally, as you say, morally ambiguous characters that do exist in our lives and, and how do we flesh those out into um, things that we can reflect on TV. Right. And I mean, where do you think Freddy fits into this puzzle? Because it is an interesting mix of the FBI, you know, Dr. Hannibal, uh, you know, where, where does she fit? Well, she, she uses the FBI as much as they can use her, basically. So even though Will Graham absolutely seems to despise her, and, and certainly Jack Crawford, played by Lawrence Fishburne, and Freddie seem to have a bit of a history with each other, I, I think she has proven herself to be useful to them sometimes. Right. And so they kind of allow things to happen because she can be useful. And so it's a bit of a game in that way of, I know I get under your skin, but you also know I can give you what you want, basically. And uh, needless to say, without giving too much away, you know, her first appearance is, uh, there's some bold moments. Uh. <laughs> yeah, she's a bit of a, she tries to be a chameleon for sure, and I think at times is more successful than other times, but yeah, she, she's pretty bold. The, uh, the very first appearance you see of her is very brief, and then when you, when you, um, Oh, wait, are you talking about that? The very first appearance? Um, okay, well, maybe not the very first, but... Or the uh, very first scene where you really get to enjoy The major it. scene. Yes, so the yes. very first the very first appearance, actually, is quite bold as well. That's true. Um, but the very first <laughs> scene that you see of her is her interacting with Hannibal, and it's it's a doozy. It's it's quite a scene, and, and she's... Yeah, she's quite forward, and uh, it's a bit of a dance that the two of them play, because he sees right through her. Well, I mean, dance, I mean, it feels like a lot of the show is a dance between, you know, kind of the three opposing forces almost. Absolutely. Hannibal being one of them. What was it like working with the cast? Because it seems like it's it was, crazy it great was cast. It was glorious. 
It was really glorious. I, I could not have been more excited to sign on to this project, especially in this kind of a role that does interact with all the big ones. Um, Lawrence and Mass and Hugh are all very generous actors and very kind and very mentoring and very supportive and it was lovely to chat with them on set and kind of explore the scenes together and, and feel safe in their hands um, and safe in the hands of, we had David Slade and uh, I got to work with David Slade and Michael Reimer and Guillermo Navarro, who's Guillermo de Toro's DOP. I mean, the, the, breadth the people we had on this show, later on you're going to see Gillian Anderson, you're going to see multiple characters from kind of the Brian Fuller universe, Pushing Daisies, Dead Like Me, Wonder Falls, Caroline uh, De Havanas is one of the leads, of course, so uh, all, all this breadth of experience to be able to come in and work with was, was really exciting. Um, I, I was saying to someone recently, so Mass I was super excited about and I did a sh series before called Camelot right. and Ava Green was on Camelot and Ava Green of course plays Vespa Lind in Casino Royale <laughs> and Mass Mickelson plays uh, the Le Chivre in Casino Royale and so my feeling is, I mean logically speaking, the next big job I have should be with Daniel Craig. Of course. <laughs> I don't see why not. I don't see why not. Make my way through the bond. Well, I mean, in terms of making the show, I mean, you know, being filmed in Toronto, I mean, it seems like kind of a, a great place now to be doing these shows. What was filming like in terms of going around? Toronto is really exciting right now. Uh, our crews are amazing. Um, hair and makeup and, and the entire crew on a set, we're, we're just everyone is really incredible we have and the really sets great are astounding. and the sets are astounding and the DOP he was astounding on this too the the whole visual aspect of this show is surreal and amazing and very Brian Fuller-esque in that sense right. um, and it was exciting to be a part of a show that you know in kind of the the top eight characters that you see you know leads and recurring guest stars and recurring characters and regulars there's four of us that are Canadian right. And that's incredible, and I'm really excited about that aspect of it, that it, even though it is such an international show and it is an American show, that there's so much Canuck in it. It's right. great. That's awesome. Well, uh, where does the show go? What can you tell us, or at least hint at, towards where the show is headed? I can't hint at that much. No? Uh, I can tell you Freddy appears in episode two for the first time, so if you watch the pilot, you won't see Freddy in the pilot, but she'll appear in episode two. Um, the What's whole Freddy's arc like then? I, I can't You can't say even say that? that? No? Uh, but the, the whole arc of the first season does kind of follow um, one storyline that gets a little bit introduced in the pilot and the twists and turns that happen with that are really exciting. And also I, I think when I watch it, the, the main intrigue happens between Hannibal and Will Graham, Hugh Dancy, mm -hmm. who gives a remarkable performance and mass. And that is really, I think, what is going to keep viewers coming back each week, is to see them do their dance together. Awesome. Well, what's coming up next for you otherwise? Uh... I have a film called Please Kill Mr. Know-It-All being released yeah. here in Toronto in May, and then it will be on TMN afterwards, which is exciting. It's a great indie Canadian film that I was pleased to be a part of. I shot that. Uh, I guess a year and a half ago, and I'm also back on Copper right now, so yes. I play Sybil O'Brien on Copper, um, I come in and out every once in a while, and so I'm back uh, this season, you'll see her pop in and, and probably do a, a little scolding of Andrew O'Brien, <laughs> who, who is played by the wonderful Canadian as well, yes. Dylan Taylor. Another show with a phenomenal set. Yeah, oh amazing, that show is amazing, you walk on it and you're in your own little village, it's a fantastic set. Awesome, well thank you so much. Thank you very much.